So most people dread uh, the idea of going through the interview process. I know it's not uh, fun for most people. In fact, you know, I even think, or I, I know that uh, a lot of people, um, even at their current companies, think or say that, hey, look, if I interviewed at the company today, I probably wouldn't get hired. They know that, uh, you know, the interview process uh, can sometimes be random, or it feels random at least. Um, sometimes they feel lucky that they got the job. Um, I know I felt that way uh, the first, uh, well, when I interviewed at Google uh, many years back. Um, so there, that's true. There is some um, some luck, I guess, involved in terms of the types of questions you might get asked or the types of interviewers that will actually get selected to interview you. But barring that, there are some really important principles and tips that I like uh, to adhere to uh, in order to maximize your chance of, of actually uh, landing the job and getting an offer. So it's going to focus on three types of interviews. I'm going to focus on coding interviews, uh, which are pretty important, especially the most important for, let's say, entry-level, mid-level, senior engineers, um, where you'll probably be faced with two or more uh, interviews where you're expected to write some code or pseudocode or go through a problem that involves algorithms or data structures or something of that nature. Then I'm going to focus on uh, design and architecture type of interview, uh, which is where you're at a whiteboard and you're expected to not necessarily write code, but to actually focus on the design of a system at a high level. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, behavioral and experiential uh, type of interviews, which are uh, a little bit more important for, let's say, senior uh, type engineers or directors or VPs, that sort of thing, um, and sometimes even uh, entry level. It's, uh, these are becoming more and more popular, uh, so it's important to talk about them. So as I've said before, I've um, you know, worked at a number of companies. Obviously, I've gotten job offers from, uh, from those. That includes companies, well, the ones that I did take are Google and Square and Snapchat, Postmates, um, Bridgewater uh, most recently. And then I've gotten interviews from companies like Naughty Dog, Riot Games, Blizzard, Pinterest, Goldman Sachs, D.E. Shaw, Two Sigma, uh, so on and so forth. And so, again, I would say all of these principles apply to nearly all of these interviews. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is what you do before the interview to get as much information as possible. Usually you're working with a recruiting coordinator or a recruiter or maybe even a headhunter. If you are working with a headhunter, it's good to try and get a contact that you can talk to directly inside of the company. Um, if you can't, uh, then just ensure that the headhunter can get qu questions answered for you. The idea, again, is to just get as much information about the interviews that you're going to, going to have. Some companies are better than this uh, at others. Facebook is very good at it, uh, for example, where they're, they'll lay out um, you know, the types of interviews you're going to have. They'll even Many companies will even tell you who you'll be interviewing with and give you their LinkedIn profiles. Um, it's a good idea to research and, uh, you know, just get familiar with the people that you are interviewing with. Um, you might find that you share connections or share interests, and these are good things just to have um, when it comes time to, to kind of establishing rapport with the interviewer. And so uh, it never hurts to just ask these questions about what to expect. Some interviewers are going, or some recruiters will give you information up front. Sometimes you just have to ask. But remember, everyone wants you to succeed. Um, everyone wins if you succeed. You get the job offer, the headhunter gets paid, the recruiter, you know, mates their numbers, they get someone, uh, a new person on the team that's it's all very good and everyone just wants you to succeed in a fair way. So let's just talk about the coding interview. As I mentioned, you know, this is probably one of the most important aspects. This is where a lot of senior people I see uh, actually mess up because they don't prepare. Uh, they haven't been writing code that often. Uh, more junior people or folks out of school um, are inclined to do a bit better because they've you know, worked on problems like this most recently. But regardless, it's important to prepare and practice. And this means focused practice. You want to do things in a very focused and deliberate way. Just because you've been writing code, let's say at work or, or something you know, on some project, it doesn't mean that you're ready for the coding interview types of problems. It's important to get into that mindset. So the first thing I would say, I like to say, is just always be coding. Make sure you're practicing every single day, uh, an hour or two or more if you can. Um, and the types of things you wanna practice on are you know, making sure that you know the fundamentals, right? First, make sure that you know your basic data structures and algorithms. I'm gonna put some links in the description to some of the important ones that, just some of the useful ones that I like uh, to review. Uh, there's certain websites like HackerRank and TopCoder that have a great number of word problems. The thing to realize is a lot of these word problems you're gonna be asked in the interview, 
generally boil down to fundamentals, right? It comes down to a graph problem or a dynamic programming problem or, or something of that nature. And sometimes it actually involves, you know, using multiple data structures to solve a problem. So, for example, if you're asked to build a versioned, uh, you know, key value store, uh, with a search, you might be expected to, you know, build a doubly linked list, but also binary search um, for the search operation. And, and you know, you're, you're kind of combining things in that nature. And so it's important to really understand the fundamentals. Re-implement data structures you want, if you want. Also, practice in a language that you're probably going to be coding in in the interview itself. I use a lot of strongly typed languages, but for interviews, I like to use languages like Python, or JavaScript, and these are just dynamic languages where you're not having to write a lot of boilerplate, you're not having to worry about uh, type safety and, and just writing a lot of code to solve a simple problem. If you need to look something up on how to do something, and there's just a ton of information about that. And I find you can solve a lot of these problems pretty easily uh, in those languages. And then these are the things you want to do to prepare, which are important, but during the interview, make sure you ask clarifying questions. You're going to be presented with a problem. Sometimes not all the information is going to be available. Sometimes they may not tell you things like, are you expected to write tests? Or should it just work for this one prop, this one set of input? Things of, things like that, you're want, you're going to want to get clarification on. What you don't want to do is, if you're not quite sure how to make it extremely efficient, you have an idea, let's say you have a problem and you know your solution is going to be n squared, but you think there's a way to make it faster, just go ahead and implement that n squared solution first. Get the thing working, because most often correctness is more important than, let's say, performance. Make sure that you're not wasting time, um, or at least you get something working. You can demonstrate that you actually can code. That's what's really important. If you feel that you actually can solve some of these problems, you find yourself being able to do it, I promise you, you will do pretty much okay in the coding interview question, regardless of what type of question is asked. So let's talk about design and architecture interviews. These can be tricky for people because they're often open-ended questions. They require a lot of communication with your interviewer. Typically how these go is the interview presents you with a problem, such as design a guest book uh, website. Okay, well, that's very open-ended. And usually you're not going to focus too much on a specific solution. That's not what they're looking for. They're not looking for you to say, okay, I'm going to use Amazon and I'm going to use this language and I'm going to do that. What they're interested in is how do you think about the problem? How do you think about things like scale and trade-offs, security, performance, things of that nature? And usually that means starting at a really high level. So typically with these sorts of uh, questions, the first thing to do is just to ask clarifying questions. Ask about what they're looking for in this system. You know, you might ask, okay, well, what are you expecting in terms of scale uh, for this website? How many people uh, do you expect to build it for? If you're, are you building a guestbook website for, for I don't know, Facebook or Google where you're expecting millions of people? Or is it just you know, a smaller site where you're trying to get an MVP or prototype up and running? That's going to really kind of help orient you in terms of how broad or, or how you should be thinking about a solution. I would say f just spend f the first five to ten minutes talking about these requirements and constraints to get an idea of, of how to frame the problem uh, to make sure that you don't go too broad or you don't go off on a rabbit hole. Start at a high level and then work your way down from there. Make sure you're in constant communication with the interviewer. Ask questions like, well, you know, I can start at this level, draw some boxes and arrows, uh, what do you think about that? And they'll often give, you know, yep, let's go in that direction, um, or let's go focus over here. Just to make sure that you're on the right track, it's okay to ask these questions as you go along. While it's important to ask questions, you should also realize, you know, that it's important to communicate what you're doing uh, along the way, and also communicate what you're thinking. So you might be talking about a solution and realize that there's a trade-off there, Talk about why you made that trade-off, right? It's important to be proactive and take ownership of the problem. The interview should not have to pull information out of you. You're taking ownership of the, of the problem and kind of leading them along the way and showing them your, your, how you're thinking about it um, and the sorts of things that are going to pop up in your mind. You know, um, They're often looking for, a, there's a whole list of things that you could touch on. They're not expecting you to touch on everything. Um, but at least some of the things, right, security or performance or whatever other trade-offs you can think of are important to talk about in real time. And then I just want to talk about how to prepare for these uh, sorts of things. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there uh, about, you know, specific types of questions that specific companies ask. Um, you know, companies like Facebook and Amazon and Netflix are going to ask questions along the lines of, 
you know, design Twitter, for example, or design a real-time feed type of product, or design WhatsApp Messenger, or design Facebook Messenger, right? Just watch those and, and make sure that you actually understand them. And then once you do watch them and understand them, you know, try and write down your own solution without, you know, with a pen and paper, drawing boxes and arrows, without relying on the video. You should be able to design these things um, on your own. Now, now I wouldn't over-index here, but it's not a bad idea to read about how some of these companies solved some of their problems. Um, you know, uh, maybe spend a little bit of time reading you know, some basic white papers, how is S3 implemented, um, you know, how is Bigtable implemented at Google, things like that that are going to um, just get your head into how, uh, how to frame uh, solutions at a high level without going into the implementations. I think if you uh, focus on a few problems and solutions like I mentioned, uh, watch those YouTube videos, um, put, you know, pencil to paper and solve them on your own, uh, think about uh, not just the high-level boxes and arrows, but also um, you know the APIs themselves, maybe the data models. These sorts of things are important and interesting to talk about when it comes to design system architecture type interview questions. So finally, I want to talk about behavioral, uh, experiential, uh, sometimes culture type interviews. These don't really involve code or anything like that. But they're there to assess, you know, your background, the culture fit, your experience, sometimes your management style if you're if you're hiring for that type of role. And so they'll usually do this by asking questions. You'll find that there's a lot of common questions uh, that are out there. You know, tell me about a time when you had to implement something difficult or you know solve a technically challenging problem, things like that. What they're looking for, you know, is um, your experience there and and how you thought about things what you know what you view is let's say difficult these aren't really trick questions you don't have to think about the most difficult problem you don't have to come up with the most difficult solution all you really have to do is be able to walk someone through your thinking and why it was difficult in the moment right a lot of problems are actually quite simple but they're difficult in terms of understanding like well what is the problem in the first place and sometimes those are really interesting uh, not just like well this is very very complicated low level difficult code you had to write or something like that. It's just the general problem. Size and shape of the problem is also pretty interesting. And so, of course, that means you can you can kind of pregame a lot of these things. Um, I have a list of questions that I like to uh, like to answer before the interview, um, just, you know, as if I was being interviewed myself. I write them down in a Word document or a Google Doc, and I just answer them. And I write, write the script beforehand, um, just so it's in my mind and I'm ready to go. Even in a remote interview situation, which we'll still see a lot of in 2021, you can actually have the script up on the screen while you're during the interview, right? These are your words and then you thought of them beforehand, um, so why not, right? And so that can really be super helpful um, when it comes time to framing uh, and answering these questions that you're asked. So and just to give an example, you know, um, when you're asked a question, sometimes it's important to, to rather than go deep into the answer, you know, step back and come at it from a conceptual level, right? So go up rather than go down. And so what I mean by that is, let's say someone asks you, you know, tell me about a time you had a conflict and had to deal with it. Well, you could jump right into a specific situation or, or a conflict, but stepping back, you might talk about how you think about conflict in the workplace and how to avoid it. You might start with, well, I believe it's important for everyone to get in sync um, up front and, and to do that early and often, right? Uh, that can avoid conflicts where people may not, um, you know, may, may be able to talk um, about something before it becomes a problem, right? And so anyway, things of that nature are, are important. And then you might dig into an actual conflict to explain, you know, how you put those types of principles into play and into action. And what that does is really show the interviewer that you kind of can systematically deal with problems um, like that, or you might systematically deal with other types of questions that they're going to ask you. So, you know, as I said, I have a number of questions that I like to um, ask before the interview, um, or rather ask myself and answer uh, on, a, on, a, on a document before the interview. There's things like, you know, what are you looking for in your next role? Why do you want to work here? Tell me about a time you had to work with a cross-functional team on a particular project. How did that go? Tell me about a time when you demonstrated a bias for action. Tell me about a time when you had to deal with ambiguity. 
or when you, you know, disagreed with someone, how did you resolve that conflict? And for management, it's things like, what's your management style? How do you know that your team is working optimally? How do you deal with low performers? What's your approach to recruiting talent? You know, things like this. These are big questions. And you want to make sure you have solid, uh, well thought out, clear answers. Um, to them and you'll do just fine in this interview. And finally, one thing I like to do, uh, you know, after the interviews, the thing's really pretty much out of your hands. I do like to follow up uh, with the interviewer, or, or sorry, with my contact at the company and share some of how I thought that the interview process went, right? Um, a lot of times the companies really love having this sort of feedback so that they can improve their process. It probably won't change any outcomes or anything of that nature, but it's good to give that feedback. Um, and I think the, the, uh, you know, the, the recruiter or the person on the other side um, might be more inclined to you know, share more information with you um, when it comes time to get feedback. So that's basically it. That's some of my tips for interviewing. As I mentioned, uh, you know, it's, a lot of it comes down to preparation beforehand. I like to spend you know, the f two weeks at least, maybe a few hours a day, um, or condensed one week, uh, you know, a little bit more than a few hours a day. 40% coding interview, 40% on design architecture practice, and then the last, you know, 20% on the behavioral side and answering some of those questions. Um, if you prepare and you have your answers and, and you feel good about it, I promise you there's a good chance that you will, a great, much greater chance of, of landing that job offer.